Culverts are tunnels used to transfer stormwater flows underneath embankments that are carrying roads or railways. Culverts are designed to pass a specific flow rates, which is associated with an acceptable natural flood level at a specific site. These structures can have different shapes, including rectangular or circular sections. Different geometries result into a different hydraulic behavior and an understanding of the free surface flow through this structure is vital for a correct design. So typically, when we have a mild plan, mild flood plan, like we have in Eastern Australia, upstream of the embankment, the water will be subcritical, that is, it will be a fluvial motion. As the water is contracted into the tunnel, the water will become critical at design flow condition inside the tunnel. And as it exits the tunnel, it will start to expand and depending upon the geometry may create a submerged hydraulic jump or hydraulic jump. In front of us, we have what is called a standard box culvert. That is the simplest design whereby we have a simple shape for the entrance, the inlet, on the outlet, the exit, while the middle is simply a box. It could be a single box or it could be side-by-side -side boxes to do a multi-cell structure. With such a design, energy losses take place. Energy losses take place a little bit in the entrance, in the inlet, but mostly at the outlet, where typically a hydraulic jump will take place and most of the energy losses will be taking place in the hydraulic jump. This energy losses, in turn, will be associated with an increase in upstream water level that we call the afflux in response to the energy loss. Afflux which potentially could create some uh, flooding further upstream. When the culvert operates at less than design flow condition, which is probably 95 to 98% of the time, the flow will be more gentle for a standard bot culvert. But on the other hand, as soon as we exceed the design flow condition, the embankment is likely to be overturned. While a standard box culvert is cheap and very easy to build, it's also fairly inefficient in terms of hydraulic engineering. And hence in Queensland in the late 1950s, a new type of culvert called the Minimum Energy Loss Culvert or MEL Culvert was designed. It has been applied in a number of applications in Australia and overseas on a typical physical model in front of us. So the key feature of the minimum energy loss culvert is our design flow to bring the flow smoothly from the inlet to the barrel in a manner which will limit the energy losses. To contract the flow with a lowering typically of the invert in the barrel to increase locally the specific energy and hence to maximize the discharge per energy, and then at the exit to bring back the flow from critical to subcritical without energy losses. In turn, because of the disappearance of any hydraulic jump at the outlet, the, the energy loss and in terms of the afflux are much smaller in the minimum energy loss culvert. So with minimum energy loss culvert, they are typically designed for one design flow condition. And there are key differences in its operation between design flow and less than design flow. At design flow, the flow is subcritical upstream, become critical from the inlet lip right through the outlet lip and go back to subcritical. When the culvert operates at less than design flow condition, we will have a subcritical flow upstream of the culvert. Locally, we will have critical flow condition at the inlet lip. The flow will become super critical as it drops down the inlet. Unusually, a small hydraulic jump will be seen in the inlet, and then the flow will be subcritical for the rest. Now, one of the features not always mentioned of any culvert is their ability to pass discharge larger than design flow with a relatively small discharge afflux. For example, in this structure, that particular structure is able to pass 100. 50% of the design flow without overtopping the embankment with an afflux which still remains of the order of 40 mm, which is quite small. And in turn, in catchment, where the design flow conditions are poorly known, 
be because of a lack of hydrological data, the MEL culvert could potentially be considered as an alternative because of its ability to cope with larger than design discharge. So in the design of MEL culvert, the two key features is a smooth transition in the inlet and in the outlet, as well as a design flow, critical flow condition from the inlet lip right through the outlet lip. Of course, as the width of the culvert, as well as the elevation of the bed around the culvert vary, the critical flow depth will vary from the inlet to the barrel, and then from the barrel to the outlet at design flow condition. But the basic concept of the design is shown in front of you. We will contract smoothly the flow from the flood plan into the inlet, we're going through the barrel of float, and then we will expand smoothly the flow back to the uh, downstream flood plan without any hydraulic jump. In the process, the float or barrel will be the narrowest part, and in some situations, that part must be much narrower than we can see here in this particular uh, sketch. In terms of the excavation, the excavation costs are of course always very expensive in the MEL culvert, and usually they are going to be restricted to a relatively small amount, anywhere between 0.5 to 2 meters, depending upon the formation of the type of soils. Because of the shape that we see here, whereby the flow needs to be remain streamlined and critical anywhere in the inlet, in the inlet and in the outlet, typically most of the MEL culvert are concrete line structure, whereby the, the inlet floor, invert, and sidewall are concrete line. Similarly for the outlet, which all together, in addition of the design and the construction cost, tend to increase the cost of the structure way above the cost of a standard box culvert. But when the afflux is a major key parameter, such an MEL culvert is significantly more efficient, and there are situations where ultimately they could become a cheaper option. The purpose of this practical is to investigate the flow characteristics through culverts, and we want to compare the performance in standard box culverts with minimum energy loss culverts. And the final scope is to predict prototype performance using physical modeling and compare the results with the numerical computations. As you can see, the two culverts are built in line, they are connected to the same inlet pipe, which enables us to compare the flow conditions and the flow features for the same discharge. The water in the channel can be adjusted by opening and closing the valve at the inlet of the channel. The flow rate is measured through a venturi or an orifice flow meter installed in the pipeline, displaying the difference in water head in an inclined manometer. The relationship between head and the discharge is provided in the rating curve next to the manometer. After setting a design discharge of 10 liters per second, the downstream water level can be adjusted to the desired value by rising or lowering the downstream gauge. The flow depths on both the upstream and the downstream side of the culverts are measured using a point gauge, with a sharp needle allowing to read the elevation of the water surface from the channel bed. The longitudinal profile in the streamwise direction of the flow can be obtained by repeating the measurements at multiple locations along the culvert and plotting the data in the provided graph. In the standard box culvert, the water depth in the inlet reaches the upper side of the barrel, inducing a free surface flow through the structure. The rectilinear inlet geometry of standard culverts results into energy losses and this is clearly visualized by the behavior of the streamlines entering the barrel. The water accelerates within the tunnel and a hydraulic jump can clearly be observed on the downstream side of the structure. The V-shape of the jump is associated with the abrupt expansion of the flow. In standard bog culverts, the majority of the energy losses occur at the outlet of the culvert, where the supercritical flow enters the downstream reach. Another characteristic of standard box culverts is the difference in water depth between the inlet and the outlet, usually called the afflux. Results showed the same behavior for all discharges, and a comparison with the numerical data obtained with the software HydroCalv revealed that predictions were higher than those measured on the physical model. 
For a design discharge, a small increase in the downstream water level does not affect the upstream water level, as shown in the graph. However, if the downstream level keeps rising, then the upstream water level increases, generating a pressurized flow in the tunnel and the culvert is drowned. Comparison with the data obtained through the software HydroCalp showed that numerical predictions tend to overestimate the upstream water level. As previously discussed, the hydraulic behavior of a minimum energy loss culvert is very different from a standard box culvert. In fact, at design discharge, the flow is subcritical in the inlet, critical in the barrel, and it becomes, again, subcritical in the downstream reach. At the inlet, dye injections show that the streamlines quickly converge into the barrel, minimizing the energy losses. The flow in the barrel is critical and it is characterized by an undulating behavior with a rapid variation of the free surface. However, when we look at the longitudinal profile, we can notice that the total head, computed as the sum between the bed elevation, the water depth and the kinematic term, remains constant along the culvert, and that no hydraulic jump is observed downstream of the culvert. If we look at the afflux, we can notice that upstream and downstream water levels are similar, and this represents a key difference with the standard box culvert. When we decrease the discharge, simulating a minimum energy loss culvert operating at less than design discharge, then a hydraulic jump appears in the inlet, characterized by strong recirculation and local air entrainment. However, downstream of the jump, in the barrel and in the outlet, the flow remains subcritical. But the main difference between standard and minimum energy loss culverts can be observed for a discharge higher than the design discharge. In fact, physical modeling clearly shows that minimum energy loss culverts are capable of conveying the extreme flood without resulting into overtopping of the embankment, which is potentially dangerous for the stability of the whole structure. In conclusion, culverts are very useful structures that are used to transport water to avoid inundations and floods. Different geometry correspond to different hydraulic behaviors, and their main features need to be well understood in order to design optimal and efficient hydraulic structures.